Hello and welcome back to another episode of Mr. Um Rocks. Today we're going to be going ahead and adding a lesson to the Move Ball series. And what we've done so far is we've learned how to move this ball back and forth from left to right on the main stage. All the code that I've written so far is on the main stage. If I look into the library, I've created a movie clip called Blue Ball underscore MC. But when the sky's on the stage, I'm going to give him a name so that I can write code to affect that instance of this particular ball. I called this guy B-Ball1, and this guy down here I've called him B-Ball2. And now if I want to write code to affect this guy, I'm going to go ahead on the main stage. I created a layer for my action script 3. I want to point out again, as I mentioned last time, that I can drag out as many instances of B-Ball or Blue Ball underscore MC as I want to. Each one of these is a particular instance of that class. So a class is to an object as a uh, blueprint is to a home. The class uh, gives the description of uh, the object. But when the object is dragged from the library and placed on the stage, it's an instance of that class. It's an object. And then um, it actually exists in memory. And I can write code to uh, do all kinds of things, including moving it around the stage. So I'm going to do that right now. We did the code already. If I hit F9, I go into my code. And let's see what we did. We added an event listener. Everything in Flash is driven by event listeners. The event that I'm listening for is enter frame. So every time I enter this frame, remember, I'm entering this frame 20 or actually 12 times a second. And then I call a function that I'm going to write called move ball. And move ball is down here. Keyword function, same name exactly. It's case sensitive. Move ball up here and down here. I accept an input parameter, which I'll discuss later. I'm not returning anything. So I use the keyword void. And now this code is going to make horizontal movement happen. Uh, I've got a variable, by the way, is a Boolean variable. So the standard syntax for action script is you use the keyword var for variable. Move right is the name I gave the variable. When I want to move right, I'm going to go ahead and set that to be equal to true. A Boolean variable is a variable that only accepts two values, either true or false. And that's all I need for this uh, particular variable. So I say, if move right equals true, I'm going to do the code inside these two curly brackets. If move right equals false, I'm going to do the code inside here. So what I'm doing is I'm simply moving the ball to the right. To do that, I take the x property of my movie clip, and I'm going to add 15 to that value and store it back in bball.x. And I keep doing that 12 times a second. I'm going to come into this frame. I'm going to choose um, this code as long as move right is true. But if I get past the edge of the stage, now I, I've set my stage to be 800 by 600. So if the x coordinate of the movie clip goes beyond 800, I can check for that here. Say so if that's true, then set move right equals false. So the next time I come up here, move right is no longer true. I'll skip this code. And down here I say if move right is false, which now it would be, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to subtract 15. In other words, I'm going to move this guy to the left. So that was the code. Now if I want up and down movement, I can just tweak this a bit, copy and paste this guy. Instead of move right, I'm going to create a second variable called move down. Okay. Again, this is just going to hold the value true or false. But if I come in here now and copy all of this code and place it right down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change the keyword right uh, to key down, or I'm sorry, move down. So I've got move down here, and I'm going to take him, I'm going to copy that guy, I'm going to copy him here and here, and in one more place down here, now I'm moving my guy down. Second thing I'm going to be doing is instead of changing the uh, X coordinate, I'm actually going to be changing the Y coordinate. So I'll do that uh, in three places here, in three places down here. And now I've got my upward and downward motion happening. Again, the height is only 600, so I'm going to change this to 600. And this should be working. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. And now what I'm seeing on my screen is the ball is moving, and every time it touches an edge of the screen, it changes direction. Um, Adobe Captivate is not capturing that, so what you're seeing uh, might look just like a stationary ball. In any case, now I've got this guy moving in all four directions. But the problem with doing this is that when I do it this way, uh, it turns out that uh, if I want to go ahead and move the second ball, 
I've got to either rewrite all of this code for the second ball, or, uh, for instance, I could say, you know, change this. I could say the same thing over here for B ball two. I just copy this in and change all my ones to twos. And that's kind of tedious, especially if I have a whole bunch of balls in here, right? And so I don't want to do this. What if I have hundreds of balls? Am I going to do this for every, every single one that I have on the stage? There should be an easier way to do this. And so let's go ahead and see what's happening here. We can see they're both moving, or I can see that they're both moving, but that's not what I want to have happen, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be writing the code on the main stage for uh, b-ball. What I'll do is I'm going to take all of this code and put it someplace else. Now this is one of the keys to not only object-oriented programming but action script in Pacific. What I can do is I can take all of this code and uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Actually I'm going to cut it out of here. I'm going to go back to my main stage. I'll go into my library now and where I have blue ball underscore MC, if I double click on that, now I'm no longer on the main scene, I'm in blue ball. So let's take a look at this. This is the timeline for the main scene. And if I click on in the library and I click on this guy, now I'm no longer on the main stage. This timeline is specifically for this um, object, which is blue ball. So blue ball underscore MC. So I can see that here. Now what I can do is I can create a layer for action script. I'll say AS3 here. I'll go ahead and call this guy bball. That's my ball layer. And I want to go ahead and add some action script here. I'm going to say uh, F9 to go into action script. A code I just took out of the other um, uh, stage I'm going to put in here. And now all this code can, is inside my class. But here's the thing. Now that I'm calling this guy he's inside the class, I no longer want to use the name of the variable. Instead, I'm going to use the keyword this. And that means that when this ball is on the stage, this dot x and this dot y uh, refer to the object itself, which in this case is a ball. And so I'm going to go ahead and change all of these guys to this. And same thing down here. I'm going to go ahead and say this. And come down here and if I go ahead and look at this guy now it turns out they both move fine they both have their own code embedded in the ball not only that um, if I would like to go ahead and um, come out of here come back to the main stage I can put uh, as many of these guys onto the stage as I want and they all have that code embedded in them and so they are all going to move together. So that's a really nice thing for ActionScript. Uh, the things that we did again was we, we changed the uh, code from the main stage. Again, on the main stage, ActionScript here has no, whoops, I put all those guys on the wrong layer. ActionScript has um, no, um, on the main stage has no code uh, for the main stage. But if I go back into the library, and I go into this guy. I've written the code once for this ball. I can see it right here. I changed the keyword to this, and he is ready to go. Let's go ahead and see that code again. Uh, again, I've added event listener. Every time I enter the frame, I want to call the function move ball. I've got two Boolean variables, which are flags, both set to true. If move right is true, I'm going to move the ball to the right. Check to see when it's gone past the edge of the stage. When it's gone past, I'm going to say move right equals false, and I'll start moving it back from the right to the left. Same thing for move down. I'm going to start off with move down true, so the ball should be starting when I run the program. It should be moving down, and they are. But when we get to the edge of the stage, they bounce up. And with those four directions kind of moving at the same time, we see the ball's moving um, all around. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Bye-bye.